Hey, what's going on, crypto people? It is uh, the Crypto Siege with another day in the life and the crazy life that is the digital asset space. What's going on, guys? Good evening, I should say. Five o'clock. I, I wanted to hop on here and do a video, share a little bit of our drive. We're uh, headed out of town to North Carolina. Uh, pretty view, isn't it? Pretty, pretty, pretty view right now. Got the sunset going on. So wanted to hop on here, guys, and just kind of comment a little bit. Uh, number one, again, major shout out to D and I. Um, the video, uh, the stream last night was awesome, absolutely amazing. Again, guys, it's a chance for us to keep the XRP radar antennas up and in tune and pointing them the right and the right direction. You know, gold back or not, who knows? We don't know, but we want to be aware of the fact that it could be possible, right? So that we can plan accordingly. I, I do, I really do feel that the IMF is going to be a big part. Uh, play a major role in the implementation of XRP. That's what I believe personally. I do believe that it's going to uh, 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 play alongside um, the SDR so that the IMF can, in fact, use the SDRs. I really do believe that. And whether this ESDR um, serves as a second global reserve currency is still yet to be said. But I think. Um, it's going in that direction. Uh, I think, you know, the time that Madame Lagarde, when she was at the IMF, the time that she spent with Brad Garlinghouse, I think they figured things out. I think she figured out how it could be used. And I think that the IMF is going to take advantage of it uh, because I think, like DNI said, an announcement of this EDF ESDR and that this digital asset is going to kind of. Um, it's going to be in, a, in a, a digital asset format or form is going to go crazy and, and let the markets do what it will in terms of the price. But it's going to give value. It's going to give um, more legitimacy. It's going to give more options to the IMF to use the SDRs and they want to use it. And that is the bottom line that's been talked about, that's been talked about, and they've been uh, almost criticized in a way that they have not been using the SDRs. Uh, and how little uh, utilized it is. And so I think they're going to do it. I really do. I, I think that the IMF is able to do it. And just like DNI says, you know, that the balance sheet is not kind of a thing for them, right? And unlike the central banks. And if they can use this quote unquote EDR to help ESDR to quote um, rebalance the balance sheets and make these balance sheets uh, better, or at least look better. I think they're going to look to do it. I really, really do believe that. So hopefully you guys can hear me good. I got my headphones in. Hopefully you don't hear any of the road noise. Uh, but yeah, I think that's significant. And I, I, you know, personally, this is just my view. I believe the IMF is going to uh, play a major role in um, stymieing, um, heading off, doing their part in terms of the central bank debt. I just, I feel like they're, you know, and this is their way to do it. This is their way to step into the forefront. And so this ESDR, I think it's a real possibility. I really, really do believe that. And uh, I, the digital asset, we don't know that it's going to be XRP. We don't know that. Uh, but I do believe that it is going to be a digital asset alongside the basket, uh, in the basket with the other SDRs. And they're going to figure out a way to create this ESDR. And when you got Shelton, Judy Shelton, kind of talking the way that she's talking, that's another thing as well. And it feels like um, she's wanting a, uh, when she says, you know, a gold standard in a cryptocurrency way, um, that could be the tokenization of gold, right? It could be the tokenization of gold in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And so um, who knows how that's going to play out. But uh, in either case, this, there's a new financial system and it is involved it's going to be around digital assets and we know that we hold as XRP hodlers we hold the greatest digital asset ever created so for me that's the thing that's most important number one the powers that be recognize or uh, have decided that they are going to embrace this new technology because they can't stop it right they can't rein it in so they're going to embrace it and if they're going to embrace digital assets it's not going to be the bitcoins or the ethereums right as madame lagarde likes to say 
right? And so when you consider that, and when you consider we all know the stance of the US of A on the digital asset, digital asset Bitcoin, we all know its stance and it's not favorable. And so like DNI says, it's encouraging that they are not saying XRP because in the digital assets do they that they do mention they're talking about excluding them from future plans not including them in future plans and so that's very very significant and it's hugely important and we can speculate obviously till the cows come home but we've seen the documents right we and we've heard the slip ups like why in the world is Steve Mnuchin when we're talking about digital assets why is he mentioning MoneyGram why would he mention a traditional money remittance company when talking about the digital assets and blockchain technology because he knows they're using XRP and so for them and people like Mnuchin they want to know that in a real world use case um, that XRP and the ODL can be used and it can be done successfully and again, like I've always said, MoneyGram's use of ODL and XRP is, in fact, Wall Street's proof of concept. And I believe Mnuchin, you know, a former hedge fund manager, understands that and knows all the ins and outs of XRP and the XRPL and how they can use it. And so we, we shall see. Again, we know this, number one. The powers that be have recognized that they cannot go, that they cannot, uh, what is the way, what does I want to say? They can't ignore the digital asset space. It's here and it's here to stay. And they know that they can't stop it. They can't rein it in. So they might as well figure out a way to embrace this digital asset space, this new asset class. And, and if they're doing that, if they're embracing and they're realizing that they're going to have to accept this digital asset class and the space, this new asset class and this digital asset space, why would they mess with uh, number 2,999? Right? <laughs> why would they mess around with that when they can deal with XRP? Because again, we all know that not only the U.S.'s stance, but Madame Lagarde now with the ECB has said, not the Bitcoins and the Ethereums. So guys, what's next, right? What's next? You, you understand what I'm saying? And so I get it. And whose name, whose name is constantly mentioned? Who has, who has a patent with Bank of America? It's not the 2,999 coin on coin market cap, right? Who is constantly, who is mentioned in executive order 13772? It's not the people from the IOHK Foundation for Cardano. It's not the people from the ES uh, Block One for EOS. It's not. It's not the uh, Ethereum Alliance that's mentioned in Executive Order One Three Seven Seven Two by name. Right? It was Ripple. And so you, you know, it's just sometimes you just gotta kind of sit back and just say, hmm kind of makes sense you know there is a company that's being mentioned in executive orders that's signed by that's created or put together by steve mnuchin and signed by the donald himself president trump you gotta think they probably know <laughs> about Ripple. they probably know and so who knows what's going to happen in davos who knows i think madame lagarde is supposed to be speaking uh, she's speaking tomorrow, Davos. I, I think tomorrow. I know she's supposed to be, you know, got some kind of announcement she's going to be making uh, on the 23rd. It's the 23rd tomorrow. I think the 23rd is tomorrow. So, so we shall see. It's hard to say. It's very, very cool to see these new partnerships with uh, the Trianglo or Trianglo. And uh, bottom line, that's cool. I mean, that's cool. No, more Ripple integration, right? which is amazing i understand that the quarter four reports are out for ripple haven't had a chance to look at uh, the numbers but uh it looked i just kind of briefly went over them it looks encouraging it looked like they were really trying to um emphasize the fact that they are 
you know, kind of pausing, if you will, this, uh, you know, the contract, the smart contract distribution of these, uh, of the XRP and, uh, you know, the OTC thing is basically coming to an end in terms of selling. So it looked like that that's what they were trying to highlight uh, as I briefly looked over that. I don't know what the percentage gains are in terms of uh, uh, XRP. I don't know. I didn't really look at it, but I do know that that report is out. And it's on Ripple Insights uh, for sure if you want to you wanna check that out. And I guess so the big news on Twitter, right, is, you know, Mnuchin, you know, why would Brad Garlinghouse retweet uh or or tweet Mnuchin saying that you know he's you know they you know we in the treasury department look to support companies that uh reduce the cost and speed and and, and all that other stuff of cross-border payments cross-border payments why would Brad Garlinghouse take the time to tweet that out it, this is Mnuchin the same guy with the executive order 13772 uh, that the president signed on the new financial system and Ripple, the company, is mentioned in there. So why would he say we, the U.S., support companies that reduce the friction, the cost, expenses, to increase the speed, ensure, increase the safety? Why, why, why would Brad Garlinghouse tweet that out, right? He just got the... You know, it, it kind of has to make you think, right? <laughs> it kind of has to make you think, right? Brad's not doing that for no reason. He knows that his company, his fintech company, is number one when it comes to cross-border payments and increasing the efficiency, lowering, reducing the cost, increasing the speed, and in, in cure, um, scalability and security. He knows his company is, out, is the one. That's why he tweeted that out, because he knows. He knows that they're the one, right? There isn't another FinTech company out there in terms of what they're doing that has a $10 billion valuation. There isn't another company out there with that. He knows. And, and uh, it's pretty cool to see that tweet. It's pretty cool to hear about uh, the central banks working with R3 and um, Corda and uh, uh, what is it, Bank of England, Bank of Canada, some, you know, in terms of the CBDCs. And, uh, you know, who, who knows what Euro trains, Euro chain is ultimately going to look like, what it's going to ultimately be. But we know that the Bank of England and the Bank of Canada, Ripple Partners, right? I believe Bank of Canada is as well. So, you know, just these things just kind of make you think. Just kind of make you think. And so, and the Eurochain thing was about uh, uh, the CBDCs being able to work with each other in different nations. So it wasn't a, right, how are we going to work, you know, cross in, in cross border in terms of utilizing our CBDCs. And I don't know about another fintech company that's working with 50 other governments and or central banks. I mean, is there another fintech company out there doing that? Because I haven't heard about I haven't heard about it. You know, we can talk Singapore and MAS all we want because I know there's I know there's a group in the digital asset space that's really talking a lot about their digital asset and the fact that it's Singapore is from Singapore and you know the monetary authority of Singapore is you know MAS is pretty popular, uh, but it's not RippleNet. You know, it's not Ripple Net. V Chain is amazing, doing their own thing without question, but it's not Ripple Net. And, and, and what I mean by that, it's not a ginormous behemoth that is the Ripple Net, right? V Chain is awesome in their own lane, doing amazing things, but it has not grown. It's, it's, it's younger, it's a younger project, and it has not grown to the size of Ripple Net. And neither is the Singapore uh, project. I'm not going to mention the name, but not, neither is the Singapore project that is, you know, out there, you know, trying to survive in this fintech blockchain DLT space, right? And so it's not the behemoth. You know, we have the first movers advantage, but in addition to having the first movers advantage, we've proven out we are in the real world in use case mode, right? Making major partnerships 
having its technology being utilized. Over 300 partnerships. It's, and like Susie from Esoteric Trading Solutions says, 300 partnerships doesn't mean one person per partnership, right? It, it could be literally millions upon millions of people able to access through the 300 partnerships. And so that's significantly important to understand. And, you know, once the networking effect and starting gets into full bloom, like it's it's over because the power is going to be in being part of the network. That is why MoneyGram is able to make the moves that they're making. And we have to pay attention to that. MoneyGram is, you know, what is this, the second or third announcement of a new strategic partnership in the last 90 days? Think about that. I mean, that's significant. And that, quite frankly, is because of the fact that they are utilizing ODL. They are on the RippleNet and they're using XRP. And they can leverage that for new revenues for themselves. They can do that. And that is the power of RippleNet. And so, and let's not even forget about RippleNet Home. <laughs> that's another thing unto itself. And so, we're in a blessed spot. I hope you guys understand it. I hope you get that hope you truly truly understand and appreciate that you are my friend are playing a game not only are you playing the game you're winning a game that the masses don't even know is being played hope you get that as an early adopter i hope you get that and if you're xrp hot i hope you understand that you're, you're on a blessed spot you hold the greatest digital asset in my opinion that has had ever been created and I hope you feel good about that. I hope you feel blessed. And I hope you guys listen. I hope you guys have an amazing, absolutely awesome evening. I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoyed uh, the drive. And uh, hopefully, maybe I'll be able to get on tonight, do a live stream. We'll see how that goes. Uh, if not, definitely we'll be doing one uh, tomorrow when we get back uh, into town. So, guys, listen. I'm going to end this video like I do all my videos and remind you of this. And that is old money doesn't want you to win they don't want us to win they would rather us remain a cog in their perpetual wheel of trading our time for dollars they don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in where we allow our money to work for us this is our chance to win guys the digital asset space is our chance to win we are in the midst of of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating? Or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know. That the battle for you has already been fought. And the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.